Hello Aries friends, I'm Annie Botticelli and welcome to my April 2020 horoscope report for you. I am so excited about this month for Aries besides birthdays continuing and even for those of you who have Aries rising like I do or your moon in Aries the sun moving over your placement is definitely a time of rebirth and ener being energized and revitalized it's also so exciting because every personal planet in the cosmos is moving through a sign that is a happy placement for Aries this is a rare time when this happens but you've got Mars moving through Aquarius, which makes a beautiful angle for you. You've got the sun moving through your sign, which is enlivening and lighting everything up for you. You're going to have Mercury moving through Aries. You're going to have Venus moving through the air sign. It's about to go into Gemini. So all of these placements are kissing, Mwah! kissing all of your placements. So this is so exciting. I am so happy about this month for us. It's just like, a point of respite and a point of flow between you know uh, some a lot of drama and changes that have been happening lately for Aries. I'm calling the theme of this month for us mega money, okay? Because there's Venus is moving through the second house. This is first, it's more superficial and it's not as intense as the second piece, but it is part of the storyline. Venus rules money, and we're going to be talking a lot about Venus in this video because Venus is going to be going retrograde, and starting April 10th, we're diving deeper and deeper and deeper into the shadow period that precedes the retrograde, and during that shadow period, the implications of the Venus retrograde will start to rear their heads, for better and worse, and we'll talk about those things. But in any case, Venus moving through the second house very often gives a boost to finances, money from nowhere. It could be new money because between March 30th and April 9th, the personal planets are completely free of retrogrades. We are going to talk about how you can best use that time because I know Aries people like to get stuff done. And so we need to really understand the importance of March 30th through April 9th and the time after because there's like two distinct periods of time. So we're going to get into all of that. But let's talk about this mega money first, okay? So Venus moving through this placement is um, is happening. And, you know, it's, it's happening even for those of you in the beginning of the sign. It's going to move out of that because it's been there. For those of you um, at the beginning of the sign, it's been there from March. It's going to be phasing out for you but it's still going to be very active for the rest of the placements, okay? And this thing with Jupiter and Pluto having a conjunction in your area of work is a big deal. Work, money, career, father figures, the energy of Capricorn is like, you know, money coming to you, somebody helping you, transformation um, when it comes to like your career, bonuses, just, it could be major, major money boom, major money boom. So I'm very excited about that. Career opportunities, recognition, you know, reconciling things with father figures, with bosses, becoming a boss, becoming your own boss. If you have to launch a business, oh my gosh, the first week of April is, first of all, one of my best favorite weeks of the whole of 2020. And it's actually the last week of 2020 that is like the best for major, major launches because every other day in 2020, we'll have a personal planet retrograde or a shadow period once we start April 10th. So, you know, that period of time is a big deal. But it's even more exciting because the um, this conjunction of Jupiter and Pluto adds this like major zest and it's happening in your work sector. So if you have to launch a business, you've got multiple factors as to why this period of time, plus the Venus in the second house, can really lock in some good astrology for your big launch. All right, so now, that leads me to the discussion. Well, actually, we're gonna talk about Venus retrograde. Let me just talk about birthdays really quick, okay? So happy birthday if it's your birthday and happy sun crossing over your rising sign or moon if that's where your placement is for Aries. When the sun crosses over your placement, it just revitalizes, it gives a clean slate, it starts a new cycle. And for those of you who have birthdays at this time, it's birthday wishes because the sun in the sky represents what you want, it's your desire. Every placement in the cosmos um, connects with, is related to experiences that we have as humans. So the sun represents desire, the things you want, the things that make your, you know, you just warm up and just like, be radiant with glowing creativity. 
So when the sun in the sky gets back to the point that it was at in your chart, it creates a portal for your wishes. That's where birthday wishes come from. They're astrological. Write your birthday wishes down. Jan Spiller, brilliant astrologer Jan Spiller says you get 10 of them. I've always just done that. I've never really questioned it. Um, and it's, it seems to work very well. So 10 wishes, write them down, say them out loud, feel them as if they've already come true because your subconscious mind is your servant. And if you get yourself more into that feeling that something's happened already, then your mind says, oh, that's what we want our efforts to be directed towards. Okay, sure, I will make that happen for you. It's your faithful servant. When you feel something as if it's already come true, it sends messages to your subconscious mind to create that reality for you. You can search for Annie Botticelli making wishes come true or just Annie making wishes come true. I think it will come up to see my video on how you use astrological power periods to make wishes come true. I also have a very major resource that I will announce in this open period of time between March 30th and April 9th um, that will also facilitate that. So in any case, if you have a launch, if you have a big birth, big decision, big agreement, something that's like a life's work or a long time you've put into something brand new, you know, wanting to start something new, launch, initiate, March 30th through April 9th is going to have the most oomph, momentum, drive, then you'll lock in that astrology as a birth date into your project. Okay, whenever we launch something for the first time, it has, it's like it's its birthday and it holds the imprint of the stars just like we hold the imprint of the stars. So if you have to do any of these things and it's in your flow and it's intuitively feeling right, sandwich it in that time because as we get into the retrograde, what happens is the energies move inward and backward like the tides are rolling in. March 30th through April 9th, the tides are pushing out in this big way and you can launch your ship and it can go way out to sea. Okay, but then when the tides start coming in, you gotta paddle, 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 paddle if you're trying to get out. So it's better to just let it come inwards and backwards, go deeper in yourself, go deeper, you know, closer into your relationships and all the things that Venus rules. Okay, so let's talk about the timeline here. Venus is going to go retrograde May 13th through June 25th. From April 10th through May 13th is the pre-transit shadow period. June 25th through the end of July is going to be the post-transit shadow period. These shadow periods are critical. So all in all, it's almost four months of Venus retrograde. This happens around every year and a half. And Venus rules so many areas of life, love and relationships, money and finances, design projects, self-esteem, um, anything having to do with like your wardrobe or your appearance and or if you're designing a house or art projects could be in there as well. Anything having to do with how you feel about yourself and things you do to your physical body from the perspective of appearance. Lot of dominion that Venus has, it covers a lot of ground. So you can see why we really wanna understand this transit, right? Because there are certain things it's not as good to do during this transit and certain things that it's really good to do and certain things it's better to do in that March 30th through April 9th. Now, also it's important to note that for people who are born with Venus in retrograde, sometimes they have opposite effects or opposite flow to people who were not. But the, the process of figuring out if Venus retrograde is influencing you from a birth chart perspective is a little bit complicated. It's not as, it, Part of it could be as easy as looking at a birth chart and seeing, does it have a little retrograde next to your Venus, okay? But if you were born in a shadow period, you could have the implications of Venus retrograde in your life as on a daily basis, and you wouldn't even know it, even if you knew to look in your chart to look for the Venus retrograde, it's complicated. So what I'm saying is because of this complication, it's best to experiment. Just observe the things that are not as good to do and are as good to do. Observe yourself having done those things or doing them or not doing them. See how it flows from your personal experience because your personal experience is going to be your biggest astrology educator. It's going to be more important than anything that anyone else says is your personal subjective experience of these transits. The more you study them, the more you'll know. Like for instance, our ruler Mars, I say ours because yeah, as I said, I have Aries rising, is going to go retrograde towards the end of the year. And we're gonna talk a lot about that. But I used to dread it because I'd be so frustrated and I couldn't like go at the same pace as I did and I'd be mad all the time about it until I really understood it. What I understood is that it was a time to take a break. 
So I would schedule vacations for that time. I would not force projects during that time. And all of a sudden, it became one of my favorite times ever that I like really look forward to because I can take a break. Okay, so I align my energies with the natural way things seem to go. That's what we want to do with this Venus retrograde, okay? So in general, people are not seeing clearly when Venus is in retrograde about the things that Venus rules. You might want to get a tattoo of a superhero on your forehead when Venus is in retrograde because we're not seeing clearly. And maybe when Venus is direct and everything's all clear, you still want to get a tattoo of a superhero on your forehead. But I recommend that you feel into getting a henna tattoo instead of a regular one, no matter where it is on your body. I'm trying to teach you the principles, the building blocks of understanding the retrograde so that you can apply these understandings towards all the many things that are going to come up in your life that I'm not citing as an example. Now, believe me, I'm very thorough and I try to cover everything. So between my Venus retrograde video, if you search for Annie Botticelli Venus retrograde, you'll see I have, ex I have created so many resources for you to try to really understand this transit. So if you search for Annie Botticelli Venus retrograde, you'll see my blog, which is a written version, like a summary of my video. Plus I've added things over time to that blog and I have a Venus retrograde through each sign and house and this Venus retrograde is going to be in Gemini so you can educate yourself on that so anniehelpsyou.com a lot of those blogs are but you can just search for anybody Botticelli Venus retrograde and you should find everything so what I'm saying is that I'm super comprehensive and I really try to think of everything with these resources I've created but there are inevitably going to be things that I didn't think of but if you understand the building blocks then you'll understand how to apply these to your life okay so use the henna tattoo as your your um, guide here so instead of doing the design project or making this big life-changing high stakes decision high stakes things things that have long-term consequence are the things we want to do march 30th through april 9th when we have that clarity when we have that oomph when the retrograde comes in we don't want to do high stakes things because we're not seeing clearly and we don't have the momentum low stakes things that don't matter that won't be of any you know consequence it's fine, just do whatever the heck you want. But if it's like a big decision, a high stakes thing, those are the things that you really have to consider experimenting with instead of doing the big thing. So big decisions in love, big decisions in money, big decisions you know, with redecorating your house, art projects, things that you wanna to do to your body. I often get questions about physical enhancements to the body. I'm not making a judgment either way. I don't, I'm completely neutral about what people wanna to do to their bodies, okay? and which is a good place to be so I can really advise you here. Enhancements to your physical body for the, the sake of appearance are not well indicated during Venus retrograde because we're not seeing clearly and often self-esteem issues could be driving the desire to do something that if you worked on the self-esteem issue that by the time the transit stopped, you might decide that you didn't wanna do it. Now I'm not saying that I'm not saying that making any enhancements to your body is because you have bad self-esteem. That's definitely not what I'm saying. But there are certain situations where somebody does have that going on. What Venus wants you to look at is your internal space, your relationships, how you relate to others, your psychology about money, your psychology about love, your psychology about your physical appearance, your self-esteem, why you do the things you do in those areas of life. That's what's really well indicated. So counseling, you know, anything that heals issues that, you know, couples counseling, all of that kind of stuff is really juicy at this time because what Venus will do is it will bring up unresolved things. Now, some of you, you see me smiling and you're like, Annie, why are you smiling if it's going to bring up unresolved things? Well, it's because I'm a conscious seeker and conscious seekers can learn, which I have, to view a retrograde as an amazing opportunity to see how the hard work I've put in those areas of life have healed. Because issues that had come up before, if the retrograde doesn't bring them up, whew, then it's very likely that the work I did on them worked. But the things that still need more work, they will come up as problems. So you can either get wrapped up in the story of the problem, or you can remember what I said, which is that, isn't this wonderful? A problem is coming up. Why is it wonderful? It's wonderful because it's telling me that this is still a problem, and it's good for me to use this retrograde to heal that issue. Transits are our friends. They bring up the things that are in the unconscious, 
and they make them conscious. So we have all these unconscious factors that are directing our lives. And indeed, that's what the planets are. In our charts, in the sky, they're unconscious factors, archetypal energies that are directing and affecting our lives. So when the transit comes up and brings something from the internal space, the unconscious space, to the conscious space, then you know, hey, that's in there. I can see you now. You've been causing mischief. You want to be heard. And now I'm going to hear you. And now we're going to resolve this and we're going to hopefully heal, you know, not have this issue again in the future. Okay. So you can have a very comprehensive look at those other resources, which will give you all kinds of caveats. But hopefully you see that basically if you have something high stakes, long term, needing oomph, needing momentum, you want to do those things March 30th through April 9th. If your intuition and your flow follows because your intuition and your flow have to supersede everything that I say. Anything that's low stakes, doesn't matter. If you change your mind at the end of it, you can change it. Um, you know, it's not long term. You're just getting some new throw rugs and you don't care if in a few months that you don't like them or they're dirty or whatever. You know, low stakes things you can do as you please. It's just the big life-changing decisions that you want to experiment with, reconsider, work in the backdrop until you have more clarity. In general, this month, I am just over the moon with excitement want to be careful we want to be careful especially around april 24th through april 28th there are some bumps with mercury in aries to, which can rule your physical body which can increase the odds of some mishaps or accidents or things with your communication or your your transportation so be extra careful around those times to not be distracted or talking be careful when you're driving with your you know don't text and walk or text and bike and you know, just be really aware of your uh, surroundings at that time, more so than usual, although it's a good practice to bring into your daily life. But overall, I'm just like over the moon excited about this month for us. I'm excited about the possibilities of money and career advancement. And I am excited about the chance for the things that have not re been resolved to be revealed so that we can work on them and for the things we have worked on to show up in a huge way. Work you've done in the past can bring so many things to you in this retrograde. It's crazy. It's really exciting. It can bring you lots of money. It can bring you lots of um, good relationship things from the work that you've done. Love from the past can come back. Renewed love can come with your partner. Um, and in the places where it doesn't, you can see where you have to do work, right? Like, like we talked about. So aligning your efforts with the oomph from the March 30th through April 9th is important. Understanding the retrogrades and what to do and how this may affect you is very critical. Knowing that you've got a lot of transformation afoot with things with your bosses and father figures, things like that. And um, yeah. Those are the things most on my mind. So if you want more resources on how to make the most of this month, you can go to CozyBySweetStarlight.com where I do written horoscopes for each sign one month early. All the links that I'm giving you will be in the notes underneath the video. If you click on see more, it will reveal these, um, were, you know, these notes with these links. AnnieHelpsYou.com is where I have the bulk of the blogs that I've referred to about maximizing the personal planet retrogrades and the Venus retrograde and all of that stuff. And you can also see my course, Becoming a Professional Astrologer Mastery Course, at AnnieHelpsYou.com or LoomLife, L-U-M-E, Life.com. That's my school, Luminous Life Multiversity. This course is so comprehensive. I am known for being very comprehensive with the things that I cover. And if you see, it, will, my course will blow your mind. It's so comprehensive that it's just this wonderland of astrological learning that will absolutely prepare you to do astrology professionally if that's what you want. It will also tell you how to make money doing it. Using my business background, I coach you through that in the course with um, the steps to take to do that. You have access to a forum to ask questions. You can study at your own pace. And if you don't want to be a professional astrologer, it's still amazing for helping yourself and helping your friends and family and just diving deeper into the study. So you can see all of that, AnnieHelpsYou.com and the other websites I gave you. I hope you have a wonderful month and I'll see you next month. Bye.